Hello everybody. Alright, I'm going to try to keep this video shorter. It's very easy for us to get a little bit drawn out here. Um, so at this point, uh, oh, anyways, sorry, let's try this again. Uh, so this will be uh, section 3, actually it's not 3.4, it'll be 3.4 for us out of, uh, out of our class thus far. It's actually not 3.4 out of the book, but that's beside the point. We're going to look at uh, the derivatives of sums and differences, constants, uh, sine x, cosine x and e of x and eventually uh, next class we'll get into the quotient rule and the product rule which are some of our more advanced derivative rules. At this point in the class we have spent some time in class and we have found the constant rule for taking the derivative of a constant. We found the power rule uh, by observation. I didn't do the formal proof with you guys but you guys have found this by observation. And then we have the constant multiple rule. All of these can be found just by using the definition of a derivative that limit as h pro which is zero thing that we've been using for uh, for finding uh, tangent lines and whatnot. All of these can be derived using um, using that rule. We're going to look at some new rules today. Um, the first one we have here is the sum and difference rules. So the sum and difference rule is uh, if we look at this one here, it's when we have two functions, we add them together, and then we apply the derivative of them. Theoretically, if we have the derivatives of each of these and we add them together, it should maintain constant. So the derivative of a sum should be equal to the sum of the derivatives. So um, I'm going to do a little example I cooked up for you. Likewise, this is also true for the difference of derivatives. Um, I, as a little side note, addition and subtraction are really the same thing. Subtraction is just addition with negative numbers. But So addition and subtraction are the same thing. So if this rule is true for addition, it should also be true for, um, for subtraction. Let's take a look at an example uh, for subtraction. So I made a really simple one here. Let me focus this for us. Okay, so we have f of x is equal to 2x and g of x is equal to 3x. The derivatives of these we know by the constant rule are going to be equal to f prime of x is equal to 2 and g prime of x will be equal to 3. Now if we add these two functions together okay, this is just going to be equal to 2x plus 3x. Okay, so That's the sum of these two functions. If I now take the derivative with respect to x the derivative with respect to x of this function, I will get, these are, this is getting into differentials, we'll talk about those later. Uh, this is the derivative with respect to x of 2x plus 3x. Okay, first I'll simplify this, so I will get the derivative with respect to x of 5x, okay, which will just be equal to 5. And it just so happens that if I take f prime of x plus g prime of x, from the results we had earlier, this is just equal to 2 plus 3, which is equal to 5, and this value and this value are equal, thus showing that our sum uh, and difference rules for derivatives do hold. So these rules are going to be important. Let's look at, uh, I want to look at a couple of examples of where you guys will actually use this in the homework. So let's take a look at some practice problems here. Um, so we're going to do, I'm going to do A with you guys here. So we have if f of 2 is equal to 3, f prime of 2 is equal to 6, g of 2 is equal to negative 1, g prime of 2 is equal to negative 4. I will do A with you guys, and then I'm going to pause the video, and I want you guys to try B on your own, and I'll come back and I'll show you guys the answer for it. So let's start off with A. So let's switch back to my feed here. Flip this over. Okay, so this is a, so we have our f of 2 is equal to 3, all of our values of our functions, and we're looking for what h of 2, h prime of 2 is equal to. And the information they give us is the general function of h of x is equal to 3fx minus 2gx. So in order to solve this problem, we need the derivative, but we don't have the actual function, so we can't use the definition of the derivative, can't use the power rule, can't use any of our tricks that we have for finding the derivative. So we have to use some of our derived information here in order to get to our result. Fortunately, we have a lot of the information that we are already looking for. We know by, let's go back here really quick, we know by our derivative rules that the sum of two functions is equal to, or I'm sorry, the derivative of a sum of functions is equal to the sum of the derivatives. So if we go back to our problem here really quick, we're looking for this at h of 2, so I can just write this in here. Let's go ahead and, um, well, we, we have a sum here, we actually have a difference here, so we can write this as the, um, 
as the difference of the derivative. So we will have 3 f prime x. So h prime of x will be equal to 3 times f prime of x minus 2 times g prime of x. Okay, And that comes directly here from our difference rule that we have here for, um, for derivatives. Okay, all right, um, let's see what else we have here. Is there anything else that we need to know here? We also have our constant rule that comes into play here a little bit. Constant rule says that if you have a constant multiplied by a function and you take the derivative of it, it will be equal to the derivative of the function multiplied by the constant, which means this, uh, if I go back here really quick, means that the three and the two are just gonna get multiplied by whatever our f prime of x is. They really don't play any effect here. They're just constants that we carry through the problem. All right, now that we know what h prime of x is based upon our information here, we don't actually know what f prime of x is and what g prime of x is. What we know is the value of those functions at specific values, which just so happens to be the same x value we're looking for here. So we will do h prime of 2 is then going to be equal to 3 times f prime of 2 minus 2 times g prime of 2. Fortunately for us, we know what the value of this is and what the value of this is. We get those from up here. So this can be rewritten as 3 times 6, that's what the value of f prime of 2 is, minus 2 times g prime of 2, which is negative 4. Simplify this out. 3 times 6 is 18. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, which gives us 26. Okay. So we have 26, and that is what h prime of 2 will be equal to for this particular problem. Cool. All right, let's go back here. I'm going to stop the video for a second. Actually, I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video for a second here. And what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to try using the same process that we just did here for A, and I want you guys to try it for the letter B. Okay? So try it for letter B in the notes, and when you get that, come back, and we will uh, we'll take a look, and I'll have the answer worked out by then. You guys can take a look and see if you guys did it correctly. All right, so we're looking at b here. We're looking for j prime of 2 when j of x is equal to 5 minus 4 g of 2. All right, so let's switch to my scratch work here, and we'll take a look here. So I have j prime of 2 is equal here. When I write that up, so I get 5 minus, oh, let's see if I can make you guys see this. It's reflecting off my hand. I don't want it to do that. Let's do that. Okay. So we have 5 minus 4 g2 here. We have the value here. We know that g of 2 is equal to negative 1 from earlier. So we can replace this g of 2 value with negative 1. That will give us 5 minus 4 times negative 1, which gives us 5 plus 4, which is just equal to 9. Okay. The thing, though, is that this is a constant here. So when we take the derivative of this, we will end up with j prime of x is equal to 0. This means that when we do j prime of 2, it will just be equal to 0 because the derivative for all values of a constant is always equal to 0. So that wasn't a very interesting example, but that's how that one works out. Okay. Let's take a look at our other examples here. So we have f prime of x if f of x is equal to 3x to the 1 half power minus 5x to the negative third power. This is really a power rule example. We did something similar to this when we were in class the other day. And we have find g prime of x if g of x is equal to 5 root x minus 2 over square root of x plus 4x squared. Turn everything, just like I showed you guys in class the other day, you want to turn all of your radicals into rational exponents and then apply the power rule from there and then simplify this out from there and that'll, that'll, that'll simplify everything out for you really pretty. So just use the power rule and rewrite your radicals as rational, rational exponents and you guys should be able to do two and three without any difficulty. All right, let's go to our next page here. So the derivative of sine of x Okay, so we're going to look at the graph of sine of x, and we're basically going to do that graphing thing that we did in the last uh, last video that I showed you guys. So let's take a look at a graph of sine of x here. So we have a graph of sine of x here. Let's identify all of our zeros, wherever all the places where we're going to have um, tangent lines that have slopes of zero. So we have a slope of zero here. We'll have a slope of zero here, and we'll have a slope of zero here and a slope of zero here. All right, and that continues on in infinity because trig functions 
like sine and cosine oscillate and repeat so they have the same shape and form over and over. So we know that these points are going to have slopes of zero. So that means we will have a slope of zero here, 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 and here. Cool. So if we take a look at the values here on this side, we have positive slopes along the function along this edge. So it will come down here all the way to our to our point here and then everything on this side of the function is a negative slope so it's going to cut down here everything going up on this section here is still negative 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 it's negative until we get to the next zero value and then it becomes positive again so we end up doing something like that positive 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 until we come here to the next one which is over here and then it becomes negative again so this is going to sweep back over here it's here and then it repeats the pattern and we end up with something that looks like well that let's take a look at our red line here this kind of looks familiar we've seen something like this before it looks like something else we may have seen before maybe maybe this function the cosine x function that's interesting so what this says here is that based upon our understanding of graphing derivatives from our prior video, when we find, let me zoom this out just a tiny bit, when we find, there we go, okay, when we find the derivative of the sine function, which is the purple line here, the pink line here that we end up generating being the graph of the function happens to be the cosine function. So let's write that down here. This is an important thing you guys will want. The f prime of x, so the derivative of sine of x, will be equal to cosine of x. Okay? You guys will want to write that down. That'll be important. So let's go to our next function here. So the next thing we're going to look at, so that's the derivative of sine. Okay? We're going to look at cosine of x next. Okay? So let's go to our cosine function here. So here's the cosine of x function. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to mark all of our zeros again, all the places where we'll have tangent lines of zero. So we have this point, we'll have this point, and we'll have this point. We can mark those on our graph. So these are all of our zeros. Okay. All right, let's start sketching this thing. So we have negative slopes coming up to this zero. Okay, we hit the zero and then we are we start to become positive. Okay, all the way up to this zero. Okay, so it's positive, 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 and then it becomes negative again, all the way down to this zero, which is over here. Hold on a second, what am I doing wrong here? So we hit positive slopes here. From this point over here, it becomes negative again. Hold on just a second, I made a mistake drawing this. Give me a second. All right, I know what I did wrong. I went to the wrong point. This section of this graph is not here. I went to the wrong point. This turns and it heads towards this zero. I'm sorry. Okay, so from here now, we have negative slopes. So these are all going to be negative, okay? Until we get to this zero where they become positive again. So we're going to turn back up and we end up with positive slopes again. And if we had another point over here, you guys would see another turn. I mean, it, it turns back this way. Okay, so this is not actually there. Ignore that section. Okay, so this blue line that we have here, that kind of looks like the sine function. So if we grab the sine function here real quick. So if we remember our sine function, our sine function here was originally the purple line. Okay, if we look at what we have here, we just drew this blue line. The blue line and the purple line are not quite the same. Okay, so there's the blue line. Here's the actual sine function, which is the purple line. So notice that the purple line's got a hump on this side and a trough on this side. So a peak over here and a trough on this side. Okay. Here we have a peak on this side and a trough on this side. So they're reverses of each other. That's not what we're looking for. Well, I'm sorry, that is what we're looking for. It's just not the sine function. It's the negative sine function. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Okay, write that one down. Okay, let's go to one more, the last one we've got here. And then I'll give you guys time some, some time to work, I think. Let's take a look here. Um, is the derivative of e to the x. I, um, I will draw you guys a picture of e to the x um, in the uh, 
uh, when we get into class, the the version, the quick version of this is the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. It is a function. The way that this was explained to me when I first learned it is e to the x, the natural function e to the x, is a function whose derivative. It's a function whose derivative is equal to the original function. So if you have f of x, let me write this down for you guys so you can see this. Okay. So if we have a function f of x, oh, you guys can't see that. Let me fix that. Okay. So if we have f of x is equal to e to the x, f prime of x is equal to e to the x. So this is a function such that its derivative is equal to the original function. Okay, only function like this. There, there's actually a rule we might. Uh, I don't know if we get to it in Calc one. It's usually done in Calculus two, where we look at um, the derivative of exponentials in general. There's something kind of unique happening here, but we're, we're um, for right now. What you guys need to know is the derivative of e to the x is equal to itself. It's just equal to e to the x. Um, you can see this with the graph if we if I make a quick sketch here. All right, so if I have a sketch here, the graph of e to the x looks something kind of like that. So over here, it starts flat. We never have a zero, so we never have a tangent line of zero. So it starts flat, so we have slopes that are really, really small. They get bigger, and they get bigger, and they get bigger if we if we draw our tangent lines going across here. So um, here, let me do it this way. So we have a flat tangent line, and then as we're moving along, the tangent lines get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. And steeper. So the, the increase, the change in the tangent lines, the slopes of the tangent lines, is going to mirror the change in the function. So we start off with flat tangent lines, and then as we progress to higher and higher x values, the tangent lines get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper following the shape of the exponential function. So there is a reason behind this. The actual technical details behind this are a little bit beyond the scope of this course. At least I didn't learn about why this specific relationship actually occurs until I was at a much higher level of math, which is kind of beyond what we're going to do in a high school uh, business calculus class. Okay, But you guys do need to know this. The derivative of e to the x is just equal to itself. All right. So we have our derivatives of sine x, cosine x, and e to the x. We have these values. Write these down if you guys have not already done so. Uh, calculus in motion, uh, graphs of these derivatives. We actually kind of did this. We don't need to do this page. I'm actually going to cut this page. You guys don't need this page. So we decide. We don't need this slide. OK, and then some practice problems for you guys. OK, so we have the derivatives. We have 3 cosine x minus 5 sine x. Okay, you, uh, we can take a look at these. Well, actually, we can do these right now. Here, let me uh, work out the answers for you guys really quick, and then we'll come back. So why don't you guys pause the video really quick, um, and I'll come back and I'll have the answers for you. Okay, we'll go ahead and finish this up here. Okay, so we have f of x is equal to 3 cosine x minus 5x. I'm sorry, 5 sine x. Uh, g of x equals 7ex, all of these. So let's go to my live feed here, and I'll take a look at these really quick. So number one, f of x is equal to 3 cosine x minus 5 sine x. The derivative for cosine x, remember this becomes negative sine x. So you'll end up with negative 3 sine x. Sine x stay, or becomes positive cosine x. Okay, So this sine will stay the same. So 5 sine x becomes minus 5 cosine x. So there's your f prime of x there. Number 2, g of x is equal to 7e to the x minus 6 cosine x plus 8 sine x. e to the x, when you take the derivative of it, always stays the same. Cosine becomes a negative sine x. Negative times a negative is a positive. Sine x becomes cosine x. Good. And then for the last one, uh, do the distribution here. That's the trick here. We have something called the uh, product rule that we'll talk about later. Don't worry about that just yet. But this is 9 cosine x minus 2 e to the x minus 4 sine x. Distribute the 2. Get 9 cosine x minus 2 e to the x plus 8 sine x. And then it's just like the previous problem is giving us a final derivative of minus 9 sine x minus 2 e to the x plus 8 cosine x. And that takes care of our last example. All right. Cool. Uh, that gets you guys to the basic derivative rules. We will look at the, uh, the product rule and the quotient rule and uh, some of those other things um, uh, probably next week. I want to make sure you guys do well on this coming quiz. Which brings us to Monday. You guys will have a quiz on Monday. We'll look at um, definition of the derivative, kind of like what you guys saw on the quiz on Monday. Uh, we'll look at tangent lines, 
Uh, graphs of derivatives, there will probably be one graphs of derivatives per question on the quiz. I'm not a big fan of uh, graphs of derivatives, but it is something worthwhile for you guys to see. We'll look at power rule, derivative rules, derivatives of sine, cosine, and e to the x. Some example problems for you guys to work with. Um, I will let you guys do this. If you guys have questions on these problems, let me know, and we can talk about them in class. All right, your home, uh, the book assignment for this, if you guys wish to get started on it, is this right here, page 115 through 116, numbers 19 through 24, 37, 38, 61, 63, and 75. All right, I will see you guys next class.